How did it start that you that you that you became uh, interested in party politics? In 2016, you joined the the, the, the Greens. So so how how did it happen? Yes. Yeah, so it was the European elections in 2014. And seeing the rise of yeah. UKIP and a lot of far-right rhetoric all across the UK, and I just remember thinking to myself, God, they've, they've won the European elections in the UK, they've got the most votes. And I was like, with everything that was happening, I thought, if I can at least make my small part of the world, my community, my Sheffield that bit better, that's at least me doing something rather than complaining. And then I would kind of just look into like who makes the local decisions in my city. I would go on YouTube, I would listen, like read articles just to find out how local decision making, local democracy works and find out about the local council. And then I was like, well, how can I become a local council? And anyway, I joined the Green Party in Sheffield because that's where a lot of my values and principles aligned with the most. And like the first campaign was saving the local library from closing down. As we know, the local library is so much more than just a place where you go and just borrow books. It's like a community center is so much more. And then, and then I basically decided to stand as a local councillor where I lived, campaigned. Uh, let's let's go back to the to the to the library. It was it also important for you. Yeah, in your what, youth? yeah, one hundred percent. It was like. It's it, it was like a drop-in center. Like it's also like a place where refugees and have like services, drop-ins where they can access a lot of different facilities. It's a crash. It's so many different places. So we're growing up, like the library, 100% played a big role of shaping my uh, childhood, 100%. So it's like, and it's same with many other people and in Sheffield and as well. So the fact that they were getting. And all the funding was being stripped away from that, so it co causes them to kind of either collapse or to be run on uh, entirely on volunteers. It was just a dire situation, and that was the earliest kind of like. And and did you succeed in in keeping it? Yeah, open? we saved the library from closing down. <laughs> so it was it was it was a massive massive uh, success. And uh, thank you very much. And I guess it's just power of collective organizing more than anything else, and really bringing our talents and resources together to really put pressure on um, the local council. And Sorry. then and then one thing led to another, and then I was a local councillor. And we, we weren't many, we were only four councillors out of um, 52 in, in Sheffield Council. Then we grew and grew, and then put myself forward for Lord Mayor. And then the European elections happened last year that we weren't even meant to be having at all. And then, and then, then you became Lord Mayor. Yeah. How do you do you my, my wife she studied uh, English liter literature so she 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 I was talking to her this morning and uh, I told her that I had this uh, this podcast with you and I said he was a lord mayor I said it's not a mayor it's a mayor may how do you pronounce mayor mayor in English mayor, mayor. It, it depends where in England some people say mayor people yeah mayor <laughs> this is what she said to me <laughs> nah and I was I was practicing this more nah because mayor it's too it's too American and she said she, you would laugh at me when I when I would say mayor but so I'm so sorry that when I pronounce it incorrect so there's two roles and um, that the uh, Lord Mayor's got so one role of it so we've got the you know we've got the local council local councillors so the Lord Mayor's two main functions is to chair the full council meeting so there's the, 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 the only kind of political side of it is the fact that you get to choose what's on the agenda of the council meeting and the council meeting is the most important meeting of the month where all the decision making happens so you can get to prioritize what we basically vote on what we kind of uh, decide to go on. And then the other side of it is, what do you call it, being the first citizen ambassador of uh, the city. So I guess for me, it was just a case of, uh, it was a great opportunity to give back to a city that's given me and so many others so much. And But at the same time, it was just a great opportunity to, I guess, highlight and campaign on certain issues and so many other things. But at the same time, it wasn't easy. Like it's, there was so many different barriers, mainly the political BS that happened along with it. In in all honesty, it was a difficult part. But um, uh, but you 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 took the fight with Donald Trump as a Lord Mayor, and you 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 stood up for the Mexicans. And Sheffield is one of the only places I know in, uh, I think all over the world that has a Remembrance Day for the for the Mexican people or a, a Friendships Day. What? Did, how did you take up the fight against Donald Trump? It was big news then. Yeah. So do you know what it was? I guess at a time where. The government was rolling the red carpet out for Donald Trump, who I think many people won't argue with the fact that he's a racist and misogynist and so many other things, right? And with Sheffield, 
For those that don't know, Sheffield was the first city of sanctuary in the UK. So it was the first refugee settlement city in the UK. So it's got a very long, rich history in welcoming people from all across the world. So I guess while the government was like making a big deal of rolling the red carpet, it was important, I guess, from from our perspective and the council and myself to be say, listen, someone who, like Donald Trump is not welcome in Sheffield, more or less. So and I guess I made the announcement at the council meeting. And of course, I got the, I had the support of the Mexican community and everything like that. And then one thing led to another and it kind of just really uh, escalated. And I did, I'll be honest with you, I didn't expect to kind of get that reaction. And then you had like Boeing and so many like the kind of um, the US ambassador, everyone kind of saying it was commenting on the issues and everything. But for me, it was important to take that stance. And the thing is, it's got nothing. It's not saying that like people would say, but imagine America are our closest allies. And I'm like, no, I completely res respect America, our close allies. But at the same time is friends have to be honest with each other. So if I had a friend who was racist, who was a complete, a terrible person, I will say, listen, you're not welcome to my house until you get yourself in order, until you sort your problems out kind of thing. So it was kind of basically getting that message across. And, and then we kind of had a, to kind of the, the the day that he was coming to the UK, we had a Mexico Solidarity Day, and uh, in in Sheffield, which was a kind of big celebration, and all across Sheffield. Because I'm a politician myself too, uh, and um, if I would suggest that we would ban Donald Tr Tr <laughs> ban Donald Trump or have this 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 celebration day for the Mexicans, I think a lot of people in our party in our parliamentary group would say that's too symbolic, you know. Sheffield is warning Donald Trump for the last time. Eh? Or GroenLinks is warning Donald Trump for the last time. What does it help? Why are you doing things like this? Why do you think this is the way we need to do politics? Do you know, it's, I guess, first of all, you have to use whatever power that you've got. So, like, in whatever facilities you go. But of course, there is a lot of power in symbolism. Also, just... Not even just the rhetoric that you use, the way you conduct yourself, the way you carry yourself, and in everything that you do. And I think it's something that really permeates and kind of cuts through everything else. And for me, like it's, I always refer back to the Maya Angelou quote, which says, like, people don't necessarily remember what you say or do, but they remember how you make them feel. So in, in everything I do, I always try and engage people on an emotional level. And especially at a time when, like, trust in politicians is very, very low, and it's, People are crying out to like for for to to see themselves in politician. It doesn't have to be that. And um, for example, Sheffield. Sheffield is a predominantly white city. I'm someone who's black, someone who's young. So, if, so a lot of people can't relate to me directly. But I guess people can relate to the values that I stand up and the things that I kind of represent. The fact that I got elected as a councillor. The fact that and um, I was Lord Mayor. The fact that I got even got elected as a member of the European Parliament for getting most of the votes in Sheffield, it's, it's testament to the fact that you don't, you don't have to be exactly what people that, that you kind of like represent to people. You know, like, so it's symbol, sim, symbolism is a really powerful tool to kind of really connect and engage with people, especially as I guess people's attention spans are getting shorter. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's quite important. You're in, in front of me, let, let me show you. This is, uh, this is your, your official portrait, is it? Yes, the, the, the official <laughs> portraits. And I was, as I was, as I was reading about you and and in in um, in for for this this podcast, I, you 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 in a lot of interviews you gave, you say the importance of um uh, um uh, the importance and significance of 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 symbols. They are so important. Where did you learn the importance of this? Is it only because you know how social media works? Do you know, I think this, 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 like I always believed in the power of authenticity in the sense of I was always someone who would be unapologetically myself. I guess especially in an environment that wasn't built for people like myself to kind of be. So even the fact of like being in... People like me? What do you mean by people like me? So uh, to, to kind of uh, elaborate on that. So for example, if you were to uh, walk inside the Sheffield Town Hall and inside the Lord Mayor's Parlour, which is over a hundred years old building with very grand, and it's like, even if you look on the walls of all the other previous Lord Mayors, it's all old white men. And it's like, I, I remember on the first day I became Lord Mayor, opening my fast, breaking my fast in the Lord Mayor's Parlour, which is the grandest office room in the entire of South Yorkshire. I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if the people that were, to, that were built this grand building and office and with all this gold would have ever thought that like a black Muslim refugee would be one day opening his fast in this 
it was something that I, I just couldn't fathom that would, would have been possible, if I'm being honest with you. So it was, I guess, there's everything like, whether we see it, or, there's a lot of tradition everywhere. And like, of course there are some, we used to have shit traditions where women weren't allowed to vote and whatnot. So you can create new traditions. So I always say like, tradition is just peer pressure from dead people. So it's not something that we should always kind of really hold on to kind of thing. So I always, I guess, I question a lot of things and I always think about how we can adapt and how we can change things.